Okay, so this is the formal title of my talk, Stecker Transform of Flux Equations. And uh, okay, and we can move into some kind of introduction. So uh, we go through basic definitions, but first I would like to tell you roughly what all this is about. So Stecker Transform is a functional transform, functional transform that uh, has a, an ability to transform a given Liouville integrable system into a new integrable system on the same Poisson manifold. I will explain on the, all these notions. Um, this second transform has originated in a paper by Jarmo Hetalinta and others in 1984, but there it has been called the coupling, coupling constant metamorphosis. Uh, and uh, this transform then contained only one parameter. We will see that parameters play an important role in Stecker transform. A generalization of this concept to, to, to a multi-parameter situation has been performed by Machi, who is listening to this talk uh, um, uh, today, and another mathematician from Opava University in Czech Republic, Artur Segiev. It was in 2008. And uh, specifically what we do in this talk, we will construct a map between Lux equations for pairs of Liouville integrable Hamiltonian systems related by a multi-parameter Stekel transform. And I understand that at the moment it may sound a little bit um, technical, but I hope I will explain all the notions here. And using this map, we construct Lux, Lux representation for a wide class of separable systems by applying the multi-parameter Stekel transform to Lux equations of suitable chosen systems from a seed class of Benanti type. Also a lot of technical information, but I will hope to somehow address all these uh, words and explain all these notions. Uh, as I understand that not everyone is familiar with, with concepts from, from uh, uh, theory of integrable systems. Uh, there is a further goal for this talk. This talk will be uh, quite technical, but it is not uh, an end point of a research. It is a one piece of a bigger research project this, that is about a systematic way of constructing so-called pine level type systems from appropriate Stecker type systems. And maybe generally, I would just me mention generally, there is a, 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 a large um, area of integrable systems that is called pine level analysis. And this pine level analysis, this, this, this branch of, of mathematical physics basically exploits uh, connections between, between soliton systems and this uh, pine level type systems. But uh, there was no connection between pine level type system, systems and separable systems uh, of Steckel type, separable in the sense of classical Hamilton Jacobi theory. This is a new thing that we are developing together in a group of people. So there was an upcoming suite of papers uh, where we will put our research. Uh, and uh, as I explained you, the, the the, the, the theory that I'm explaining today is just a, a, a smaller part of a larger research pro, uh, project. But uh, I would need much more time to explain all these details. So we will focus only on that. Some relevant publications, maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, I can send you, uh, Celestine, then my, my, my presentation so that you can have these references. But this is this classical paper of Jarmo Hitalinta uh, and the Grammaticos and Dorizzi and Ramani in 1984, where, where, as I told you, uh, this Stecker transform has been prim primarily called the coupling constant met metamorphosis. This is the paper in 2008 of Machi and Arthur, where they generalized it into a uh, multi-parameter transform. What I am going to say today is basically in this paper number six, uh, published in Studies in Applied Mathematics last year. So uh, most of things that I'm going to say, to speak about today, can be found in publication number six. Okay, and very elementary introduction to Poisson manifolds first. So, and if you don't know what manifold is, think about Rn, just Euclidean space with n dimensions. Otherwise, consider a smooth manifold. And this is of course, uh, C infinity m is of course a set of all smooth real val valued functions on m. And we call such a manifold Poisson if it is equipped with a Poisson by vector. And what is a Poisson by vector? It's a two zero tensor, so it has two indices up and no down, 
which is anti-symmetric and such that the corresponding bilinear map mapping between two functions satisfies the Jacobi identity. So what happens here is that, say that you have two functions on the manifold, you calculate their differentials and you apply the bivector pi to this. You obtain a new function, which is called Poisson bracket of functions f and g. And this bracket should satisfy the Jacobi identity. In such a case, the tensor, the, this, this bivector pi, anti-symmetric bivector pi is called a Poisson bivector. And the manifold itself is called the Poisson manifold or manifold equipped with a Poisson structure. And uh, many of you maybe have heard about symplectic structures. In a sense, a symplectic structure is an inverse of a Poisson structure. Anyway, if you have a Poisson bracket on our manifold, then this Poisson bracket due to this, uh, due this uh, condition, it turns C infinity M into a Lie algebra. So this is a general setting. We work with, on Poisson manifolds. And Poisson manifolds simply model physical systems. Many systems of classical mathematical physics are constructed as Hamiltonian systems on some, on cotangent bundles to some, uh, some um, uh, manifolds. One thing that one could mention about uh, Poisson operators is that you can always find a set of locally in a neighborhood of any point, you can find a set of, uh, if it is non-degenerated, then of course it must have a dimension, uh, an even dimension. In a neighborhood of any point at such a manifold where you have a non-generated Poisson operator, you can find so-called Darboux coordinates in which the Poisson bivector or Poisson tensor attains this very well-known uh, canonical form. Uh, IN is, uh, stands for N times N identity matrix. So this is our world. Poisson manifolds. This is where we, so to say, sit during the whole talk. And then if you have a Poisson manifold, you can speak about Hamiltonian systems. So uh, take any function H on our manifold, calculate its gradient or differential and apply Poisson by, by vector to it. You will get a vector at each point. In this case, any, when you change point, you get uh, vectors X at different points of a manifold. Um, such a vector field, on a manifold is called Hamiltonian vector field. And the corresponding dynamical system um, is called a Hamiltonian system on M generated by the Hamiltonian H. And uh, maybe if you remember the Darboux theorem, if you write your Hamiltonian system in Darboux coordinates, then pi has a very special form, which means that in Darboux coordinates, uh, equations of the Hamiltonian equation of motions uh, have this very well-known form. Uh, oh, sorry, it should be lambda i here, it's a mistake. <laughs> so usually this condition coordinates lambda i are, are called positions of a dynamical system and ui are usually called momenta of a dynamical system. If you work in Darbu or canonical coordinates. So this is our setup. We live on a Poisson manifold during this talk and we look on how it, look for or, or, or take a look at Hamiltonian systems on this manifold. And now there is a class of Hamiltonian systems that are particularly interesting and they are called integrable systems or maybe Liouville integrable systems. Why Liouville integrable systems? Of course, it's, it started with the work of Liouville uh, but it has been sent then extended very much. Liouville integrable system anyway, it's a finite dimensional system that is defined here. You should know also that there is also a, a large theory of infinite dimensional integrable systems like soliton systems. And uh, we sp here speak about finite dimensional uh, integrable systems. So what is a Liouville integrable system? Let us take a look at this. To begin with, we have um, our manifold equipped with our Poisson by vector. This is a Poisson manifold. And we assume it's, uh, uh, all the, uh, it's even dimensional. We do not assume pi to be non-degenerated usually, but if you if you want, if it's easier for you to think, you may think that pi is non-degenerated. We are not going to use the inverse of pi here. But anyway, what is a Liouville integrable system? It's a very interesting uh, object. Uh, we say that we have a, a Liouville integrable system on M. If we have 
n functionally independent functions, real valued functions on m, which are in involution, as it is called, with respect to Poisson bracket generated by the Poisson operator pi. And what does it mean is that, uh, that the Poisson bracket between each pair, every, every pair in, uh, between each uh, two uh, functions hi vanishes. And since each of these Hamiltonians defines its own Hamiltonian system, note that for, uh, then, of course, we can also say that, that uh, a Liouville integrable system is a set of commuting in the sense of, of commuting of vector fields, commuting um, Hamiltonian vector fields on a manifold M. And as such, it has many interesting properties. Maybe you have heard about Liouville Arnold theorem saying that motion for such a system is restricted to Liouville tori. There is action angle variables. And in principle, in principle, such systems can be solved by quadratures, that is, by taking usual algebraic operations, taking roots, inverses of these operations, and also integrals. Uh, because of, usually, of course, normally, such a system, Hamiltonian system, is a system of coupled ODs with no obvious way of solving. Uh, but in case when the system is UV integrable, there are techniques to somehow approach the, 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 the solvability issue of these systems. And now, so we have this beautiful structure. We have n independent factors in evolution. And now, in some cases, such systems can also have something that is called Lux formulation. What is this? This is a, a matrix equation of this form, well, LTJ is simply a different uh, time derivative of uh, uh, an operator matrix L with respect to time J. And this is a commutator of matrices. I would like to, if, before we move on, I would like to uh, explain you why we use uh, index at times I. Namely, it is so that for each Hamiltonian A, HI, you have a separate equation of motion. You can think of, uh, so if you have two such systems, you may think of that you have one flow parameterized with time t1, say, on the manifold, and you have another flow of a dynamical system parameterized by time t2. Um, so, uh, oh, I got a question. A concrete example of Poisson manifold. The e this easiest example is R2n. With uh, the standard with canonical coordinates, so uh, I got a, a question about example of a Poisson manifold. Think about m uh, r to n, so m is simply r to n, and think about Poisson bracket having directly this form. This is a, a simplest example of a Poisson manifold, but. Uh, any manifold equipped with a, uh, with a bivector that satisfies these uh, axioms is a Poisson manifold. Uh, let us go back to this issue. So again, what we are on a manifold M. We have n Hamiltonians in, or n functions in involution. To which such Hamiltonian you can associate a, a dynamical system that is called Hamiltonian system associated with H A, and uh, these systems commute. What does it mean? Take a point on a manifold and travel maybe two seconds along the flow of the first uh, uh, equation, and then say seven seconds uh, along the flow of the second equation. And then you do the same with the same point, but in a reverse order. You end up in the same point. This is what it means that these vector fields or these systems commute. So these are algebraically very interested, uh, interesting uh, and geometrically very interesting uh, objects to study. Of course, they are very rare. It's a, it's a normally given set of Hamiltonians will not commute, and then will, they will not create a new integrable system. Anyway, today we are going to speak about lax formulations for such systems. And it turns out that you can encode such a system, such a dynamical system, in a matrix equation, in a certain sense, so that if you if you write down this Lux uh, formulation explicitly, you will somehow recover uh, this equation. 
So suppose that we have a Lubin integrable system, which means exactly n Hamiltonians in evolution on our manifold. And suppose that uh, uh, it also has a Lax formulation. A Lax formulation, again, it's an equation of this type. This is a commutator of two matrices, U, A, J, and L. So for each such, oh, sorry, each such equation, sorry, each such equation simply encodes uh, corresponding equation here, dynamical equation here. And uh, what is important to know is that this uh, matrix uh, may depend on some spectral parameter, lambda. They will say uh, the concept of Lux pairs is a quite old one. And maybe you have heard about Peter Lux's work when he showed that KDV equation can be written as a as a, as a has a Lax formulation can be written as a Lax equation. If you have a Lax formulation for a given differential equation, then it is easy for you or easier for you to find its constants of motion, for example. And uh, this is a notion that I maybe should explain for a moment. Look again at these equations one. Since they commute, we can say that every one of these equations is a constant of motion. Every one of these Hamiltonians is the constant of motion for all the remaining Hamiltonians. Which means that if you take a trajectory of system number five, for example, here, then the values of all the Hamiltonians here along the trajectories of the system will not change. So Lux formulations help us to find um, integrals of motion of a dynamical system. So these are very useful to work with. Okay, now there will be a lot of indices, but we will try to <laughs> um, explain this. Now to this concepts of Stecker transform discovered or introduced by Machi, Boashak, and Arthur Segeev. Multi-parameter. So for, forget for a moment about Lubin integrability. Say that you have a number, or say I choose here an n, a number of functions on a manifold, depending on the position of manifold. So x depends, denotes a point on the manifold. And then, then they do depend on some number of uh, parameters say less than the number of functions here. And what you do now, you decide, you choose, pick up some of these indices, say k of them in some order, and you consider only the equations three with these indices. You, you, for example, you, you, you take first, third, and seventh, yes, if k is three. So you, you, you choose k of these equations, of these n equations, you, you choose exactly k. And if possible, you solve this subsystem of equations with respect to these parameters. When you solve it on the right, on the left hand side, you will get, uh, when you solve this system of equations with respect to the parameters alpha one, alpha k, you receive a new functions on the manifold depending on new values of these right hand signs, which we call alpha tilde. So again, of the set of n equations, you pick up k of them, which k you, you want, maybe first k or the last k. Uh, you solve them with respect to parameters alpha, alpha one to alpha k. And what you get, you are getting new Hamiltonians on the manifold, k of them. And you take then the re remaining ones of them and you just put these values of alpha one to alpha k calculated here in these Hamiltonian functions. In such a way, you will get n new, new functions on, on manifold. So once again, so because this is important, uh, we cannot move beyond if we don't understand this concept. You have n, sorry, you have n equations, you have n equations of this type. You choose k of them. You solve these equations with respect to, with respect to the constants alpha or parameters alpha one to alpha k. The, the solved right hand side, you, you, you could treat as a new functions on a manifold and you complete them to n functions by taking the remaining functions from here and replacing alpha one to alpha k by these expressions. What you get is a Stecker, which is what we, what we call Stecker transform of our Hamiltonians or our functions. And as such, it has nothing to do with the integrability, nothing to do with Lux pairs, nothing to do with anything. It's just a functional transform. But, and of course, you can quite easily imagine that it is a reciprocal transform. If you do it twice, you get back to your own old functions. 
this is just a moment of reflection. I know it's con this concept is new for you, but if you think a little bit about it, you realize that if you perform this reciprocal transform again with respect to the same set of indices, then you get back to the old Hamiltonians, old functions. So this is good. But what is also more interesting is that if the original functions are functional independent, then it's the Eustekel transform is also functional independent. And also, if the original functions are in evolution with respect to some Poisson tensor for all values of parameters alpha, then the new functions hi tilde, the Eustekel transform, are also in evolution with respect to the Poisson bracket pi for all values of alpha i, alpha I tilde. So Stecker transform is somehow very well adapted to studying UV systems because UV systems are exactly functionally independent um, functions that are in evolution with respect to each other, given, uh, given some Poisson tensor. So we can conclude that if you have a UV system and you perform a second transform, you get another UV system. There comes some technical information. There is a theorem relating the vector fields on the right hand side, the vector fields defining or, uh, the old and the new systems. There is, of course, there is a linear transformation between them, given with this, with the help of this matrix A, which is basically identity matrix, except at some places where it is uh, this expression. So uh, we can easily relate vector fields xi and xi tilde. Note again that the index i does not mean any coordinate. It's a number of a function and a number of vector field. It's not a number of coordinate. These are geometric objects. So x is a point on a manifold. i, again, numbers a time, numbers a system. So we have n such system. The first one evolves along time t1, and the last one Evolves, evolves along time tn. It's a little bit confusing at the moment because we think that there is only one time, <laughs> but not in the theory of dynamical systems. It can be plenty of times. So, uh, so we number times here, simply. And here we number vector fields. OK. So uh, now uh, a result. Uh, that helps us to understand how lax formulation of two UV systems uh, are related. So uh, first, we suppose that we have a UV integrable system. Again, it uh, and suppose that these Hamiltonians depend on some extra parameters. Otherwise, we cannot perform any any Stekel transform. And suppose that we perform a Stekel transform as described before. We get a new UV integrable system. And suppose that the old UV system, uh, non tilde system, had some uh, lax formulation. Then it turns out that the Stekel transform of this UV system, the tilde system, there are tilde times and tilde Hamiltonians here, has it's some lax representation that is related in a very elegant way uh, with the uh, lax formulation of the old system. So again, what did you see? Sorry. What is a lax form? Here you see the lax formulation of, of a UV integrable system. Actually, it's n matrix equations, each for uh, one equation for each subsystem uh, that uh, enters a UV integrable system. So uh, we have t1, t2 up to tn, and we have n matrices u1 up to un. They all depend on positions on manifold, that they change from point to point on a manifold, and they also depend on the spectral parameter lambda. So now, now uh, we, um, what we do, we simply create a lax representation for this new transformed system from the lax representation of the old system by quite a simple uh, technique. We simply uh, say that the lax matrix of the new system is created from the lax matrix of the old system by replacing uh, alpha by h, by, by, by h tilde. There was alpha before in the matrix L. And also, uh, 
The new auxiliary matrices, as they are called in the Lax theory, the new auxiliary matrices UJ are easily constru constructed in such a linear way from the Lax matrices of the old system before transformation. So in words, in order to obtain the Lax matrix for, for the transformed system, it's enough to replace each constant uh, alpha i in the Lax matrix of the old system by the corresponding uh, Hamiltonian tilde Hamiltonian, as it was has been done in the Stecker transform, and the same substitutions has to be have to be performed in in these and these places. Okay, it's a lot of indices, but the information is that it's a it is a direct, uh, constructive way of of producing Lax representation of a system after Stecker transform from the Lax representation of the system uh, of, of the original system. So it's a very easy. It may take some time to compute it, but in, in general, it's in theory, it's very easy. Now we can skip the proof. I will only say that the proof basically is a chain rule. <laughs> Just uh, you don't maybe don't see it now, but it's a chain rule from from multivariable calculus. It's nothing strange. You simply decode. You simply read carefully all the notation and and see uh, what the uh, total derivatives in new and old coordinates look like. And you will end up with the correct expression. So it's a very elementary, it's a one line, one line proof. Although as we know, I think it's, it was a Polish mathematician, Stanisław Ulam, who said once that all proofs are one, one line proofs if you start sufficiently far to the left. So, <laughs> but this one is a short one line proof. So, okay. So two more information before we uh, move on. As I told you, these lax formulations, um, they are actually understood as a differential algebraic consequences of these systems. They are not, sometimes, sometimes it's very difficult to recover algebraically the original systems from the lax representations. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's very difficult. But they are anyway differential algebraic consequences, which means that if the systems evolve to, according to their differential equations, then these Lax equations are satisfied for all times, for all values of x, all values of lambda, and so on. So these Lax formulations are differential algebraic consequences of these systems. And moreover, it's a global result. I didn't mention this uh, submanifolds so m alpha, alpha tilde, they originate in the proof. But uh, so we can skip maybe this, uh, this uh, sentence for the moment. And now we are going to look on a very special class of, of uh, Liouville integrable systems that is called separable systems. And we are going to apply our concepts to this particular, to a particular class of separable systems. And uh, I don't know what's going on with time, but I see that it's, for me, it's going rapidly forward. But maybe for you, since you didn't have coffee, maybe you, it is slowing down in, but for me, it's rushing forward. Anyway, let's try to make sense of, of the last maybe uh, 15 minutes of this talk because I didn't even, uh, I, I didn't, I would like to come to the result, of course. So what we do, we work on a Poisson manifold. And uh, in 1995, a, a prominent Russian mathematician, Sklyanin, has come with an idea in quantum mechanics, but anyway, of uh, so called separation relations. He discovered. By, but this knowledge, of course, this was already basically known to Jacobi, I would say, definitely. Uh, but he, he somehow rediscovered that if you take such an algebraic re relations, n of them, such that at each relation depends on only on one pair of canonical coordinates on the manifold. So we have a Poisson, um, uh, Poisson structure, we have canonical coordinates, and we take such n such relations. If we solve them, with respect to these parameters, which, which is a little bit similar to this, what we did in Stecker transform case. If you solve this with respect to these parameters, if it's given if it's possible, of course, the right hand sides will be functions of all, of all the uh, variables lambda and all the variables mu, and um, they will uh, commute. So they will they will constitute a UV integrable system already given in canonical form. So this this would be canonical coordinates for the system. And uh, if all phi i happens to be the same, then we simply say that 
This system is generated by a single separation curve in a from the complex plane, algebraic curve, maybe in, in most cases. And uh, I don't want to bother with all the details, but if you do this, you get a system uh, that is not only UV integrable, but also it is separable in the sense of Hamilton Jacobi theory, which means that it is very easy now, or at least up to quadratures, up to quadratures, it's very easy to get a canonical transformation from this separation of variables to variables B, A, say, B1 up to Bn and A1 to An that linearize all the flows of the Hamiltonians uh, uh, generated by the by the separation relations. It's a very classical and very beautiful theory. I'm going to explain it further, but if you feel uh, hungry for, for knowing more, you should maybe read a little bit about Hamilton Jacobi equation and, and, and it's modern. It's basically a Jacobi theorem that I presented here. Now we look at a very special class of Stecker of, 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 of these uh, separation relations, namely so called Stecker separable systems of Benanti type. So our separation curve is simply given by this expression. So we see some function of lambda, some function of lambda multiplied by mu square, and our uh, set of Hamiltonians here. Solving n copies of such expression with respect to Hamiltonians or functions aj yields this function in this form. And this is a very interesting object. It's called a Steckel separable system of Benanti type. And if you interpret G as a metric tensor and on, on a Riemannian manifold spanned by lambdas, then Kj are killing tensors for this metric tensor, no matter what J is. Anyway, you get N Hamiltonians in evolution, separable in coordinates lambda mu, separable in the sense of Hamilton Jacobi theory. And this object here is uh, what we call uh, basic separable potentials that can be uh, easily obtained in lambda coordinates by simple recursion, which is here. So there is a, a way of producing this separable. These are polynomials for a positive beta and the rational functions quite complicated actually for negative beta. So this is the world in which we now work. And uh, these Stecker systems of Benanti type have a lax representation. That was published firstly in another paper of Maciej together with uh, Zbigniew Domański, uh, Ziemowicz Domański, I think. Um, so now you can see a little bit more how these lax uh, matrices and uh, auxiliary matrices can look like. V of lambda, this is a spectral parameter. It has nothing to do with uh, coordinates lambda one to lambda n, by the way. So this uh, V of lambda and U of lambda are given here. They are uh, polynomials in lambda, but W of lambda is not a polynomial. It's such an expression. Plus means a it's explained here, perhaps. It's a polynomial part or loaded polynomial part of our quotient. Anyway, these are the lax uh, matrices for, for uh, um, these uh, Benanti systems or Stecker systems of Benanti type. And note one thing, there is an arbitrary function G of lambda here. It must be different from zero, <laughs> but otherwise it's arbitrary, maybe smooth, it has some regulated properties. So for any such G, this would be a lax, uh, sorry, this would be a lax operator. And this would be a, a, a auxiliary lax matrix, or auxiliary lax matrices for, for, for this system. So it's a great freedom here. Note that the functions F and Sigma that actually defines Benanti system, they enter to this lax pair through this expression, through capital F. We have here small F and small Sigma. Okay, and one nice thing about this is that the slacks matrix nicely reconstruct the separation curve of our Benanti system. This is a very beautiful thing. Very good. Um, also, well, I should mention that even though we calculated everything in separable separation coordinates, this expression for lax matrices and auxil auxiliary lax matrices are invariant with respect to change of coordinates. Uh, so they look all the same in any coordinate system. What you do if you need to change coordinate system on the manifold, you simply change coordinates here, lambda k and mu i, mu k. These are changed, but 
the overall algebraic structure of the Lux pair survives any change of coordinates. So it is a very, very robo robust uh, object on a manifold that describes our system. OK, and now a specific goal. I have presented now uh, the result of uh, Machi and, 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 and Jemovi Domanski how to uh, create uh, Lux pair for a, for a Benenti system. A Stecker, a Stecker system of Benenti type. But what if this, say, what happens if these um, powers do not come in the order as it is written here from lambda to n minus one up to lambda to zero, but in some other arbitrary order? This is our next goal. Find Lux formulations for arbitrary, it's called gamma class. It's like a Benenti system, but with holes here and maybe some gammas that are larger than n. So it's a different system. That's a absolutely different system. So the, the first thing we did, we found, and now I've really, I'm running out of time. So I will just show you quickly. We found a Stecker transform between these systems. It is best, it is easiest to see it on a, on a level of uh, separation curves. And what to do here? So this is, once again, this is our goal. The goal here is to find a Lux formulation for this object, given that we know the Lux formulations for these objects. This is known. This is what Machi and Jemovi did. OK, so how do we generalize it to this object? Well, we construct a Stecker transform from, from the Benenti system to this gamma system. And then we use our theorem that I just presented about how to map Lux formulation from one UV system to another UV system. This is the general idea. And in order to do this, we have to embed them. We can do, we have to add parameters for a moment at least. And this is how it is done. Um, uh, we, this is, this is our Benenti system that we start with. We add some parameters and we end up with a gamma system with some extra parameters. I have no time to explain detail, but it is very, I, in my opinion, it's very beautiful construction and, <laughs> It's uh, it's yes yes you really possibility of mapping between Benenti system and any gamma system. Uh, let us take a look at an example because I understand that you are confused. Here is something that is very well known in literature. It's actually something that's called Henon Hyde system. It's a system dynamical system exp um, uh, discovered in 1962, and it is supposed to describe a rotation of uh, a path uh, uh, of star of a star around a, a centrum center of our galaxy, and uh, it is a complete in some in some cases it's a completely integrable system of UV type, and uh, here we reconstruct it from the with the help of this separation curve. So what you do if you, if you want to get Hamiltonians, you simply put two copies of such a equation. At, at first copy, you write lambda 1 and mu 1, and lambda 1 and lambda 1 here. At the second copy, you, you, you put lambda 2, lambda 2, mu 2, and lambda 2. And you solve this two, these two equations with respect to Hamiltonians h1 and h2. Fine. And then you will get something that is called henle hyde Hamiltonians. It's a completely integrable UV system, of course, because it comes from separation curve. Uh, and then you would like to make some Stecker transform on it. So you extend it by a, a term that contains parameter. And look what happens on the level of separation curve. What happens during the Stecker transform, this is why Stecker transform is easiest to understand on the level of separation curves, maybe, than on the level of Hamiltonians. Alpha becomes H1 tilde. H1 becomes alpha tilde in this case. And H2 simply because it becomes H2 tilde. And then you put the value of alpha tilde to 0, and you end up with a new completely new, actually, system that is called Stecker transform of this system, Stecker transform of Sahano high system. This is uh, exactly how the Hamiltonians of the old and new systems are related. As you see, uh, elementary basic, basic uh, separable uh, potentials here enter the expressions. Here is uh, how these systems look like in a so-called orthogonal coordinates. So maybe these coordinates 
uh, are more, more known to people working in, with Hanoi High systems. Uh, the sound that you hear is uh, some kind of construct, construction work going on that I didn't know about. So we have to somehow uh, be patient about it. And after Stecker transform, uh, these Hamiltonians attain this form, rational now, as you see, in uh, position variables. So this is an example how Stecker transform works. And now, finally, we would like to get a lax pair for these new uh, tilde systems after Stecker transform. It's a very easy way now to very easy way now to do it. Uh, first, this is a lax pair of our original system extended by parameters. Otherwise, we cannot do any Stecker transform. And uh, what happens on the the uh, these parameters enter on the W function by this extra term in containing these K parameters with respect to which we perform Stecker transform. G is again this arbitrary function, and F is a function defining uh, our, Benent, uh, our original Benenti system. And UJ are given as uh, before, but we can uh, we have to replace L, but L of, uh, depending also on alpha. And what happens after Stecker transform? After Stecker transform, only one term uh, changes alpha becoming alpha tilde here. Uh, and uh, we replace simply alpha by H -A, H H A tilde, as it is done in a Stecker transform on the level of separation curve. And so also we have to modify the auxiliary matrices by replacing, uh, this should be X here, sorry, not Xi, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by replacing, by, by, by writing this simply, this linear expression. So uh, for example, this is how they extended, extended by this one parameter. So again, we look now at this, uh, the, at this um, Hanoi high system and its extension by one parameter. If we extend the system by this parameter, which is necessary to, in order to perform stacker transform, we end up with this lax, lax pair. It's a two times two matrix. D and U are polynomials in Lambda. W is a more complicated. And plus is as, as I told you this, um, I explained this before. What happened? Uh, what happened after lax, lax, uh, uh, after Stecker transform is that alpha becomes H1 tilde, and that's it. And of course, U1 tilde and U2, U1 and U2 transforms to, to U1 tilde and U2 tilde in some way that is uh, covered by our theorem. Yes, it's exactly the formulas of our theorem written in this particular case. Uh, so this is, and, and then uh, this is still on the level of extended system. And when we go back to non-extended system, we remove the constants, we end up with this lax formulation for the transformed Hanon Hive system, transformed by the second transform. And uh, now just quickly, we can have, as you see, there is this function G that is arbitrary. So what happens if G is one? The easiest function ever, one, or maybe easiest is identity function, g of lambda equal to one lambda. This is also a very easy function, g of lambda is equal to one. <laughs> then we end up with these expressions, L, U1, and U2. These are, as you see, rational in position variables, rational, but not in momenta variables, rational in position variables, lax pairs. So again, if you calculate, if you just take a lax equation, LT equals to U1, L, and LT equals to U2, L, you should, in a sense, recover Hanon Heist equations, Hamiltonian equations uh, of motion for Hanon Heist system. Uh, after trans Stecker transform, for the transformed system, the lax pairs look like this. So it's a machinery. Our theorem uh, gives us the possibility of generating a lot of lax formulations for, for transformed systems, for any gamma system, basically. Here is what happens if you take another function G, lambda, named lambda, the identity function. Uh, in such a case, as you may see optically, the uh, the lax formulation is uh, is easier. It's uh, it looks uh, more nicely as uh, it is just polynomial um, expression. There is no rational functions or anything else. So uh, this is a 
uh, lag simulation of the transformed Hanon Hive system uh, when, we we have, when we have chosen G as an identity function. Uh, also very nice, although uh, maybe not rational, but very nice. And that's basically all I wanted to you. Let me just sum a little bit before I, I maybe hear to your questions. So to begin with, remember that this is a part of a larger research project. And we needed this uh, for the reasons that I explained, uh, I explained a little bit here. No, sorry, here. We needed uh, this uh, construction in order to perform the second point on this um, research program, construct the isomodromic lax formulation for, for uh, multi-parameter families of Hamiltonian intercouple not only Hamiltonian systems. So it's a part of something bigger, but it's interesting in itself as we uh, were able to produce large classes of lax formulations for arbitrary, arbitrary uh, uh, gamma systems. So once again, so that you remember something after my talk. Uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, sorry. So uh, what has been known before, it was a lax formulation for, for Stecker systems of Benenti type. What we did was uh, to generalize it to um, so-called arbitrary GABA class. And, uh, using Steckel transform, we were able to produce a lot, I mean, infinitely many, or uh, we, we were able to produce lax formulations for these systems number 15, uh, parameterized by, 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 by basically arbitrary function G of lambda. Okay, I think that uh, uh, I will stop here. <laughs>